So SAP is one of those things in IT and especially security that you don't know about until all of a sudden you really have to know about it. Uh, it's a critical part of ERP and CRM and PLM and that whole alphabet soup of things. The next talk comes to you from JP Perez from Onopsis, who's going to be talking about uh, the latest vulnerabilities in SAP uh, and how to think about the threats and how to make sure that your mission critical software uh, continues to run in a ship shape fashion. So JP, take it away. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me and thanks B-Sides for having me here. Um, it's a, an honor to be part of this conference. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the content, uh, the topics that we're gonna cover um, and, and the demos that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, of course, I have a, a, some pre-recorded demos because you know that uh, these things uh, can fail, so um, that that works better. But um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, we're gonna be covering some of the latest threats and vulnerabilities to mission critical SAP applications. Um, I'm gonna get into more of, of those details uh, as we go through the slides. Um, as from a very brief introduction, uh, I'm JP. Um, actually, my name is uh, longer than that, is, uh, but, but it's harder to pronounce. So let's go by JP, that, that, that works well. Um, I'm CTO of one of the founders of Onapsis. Uh, we do cybersecurity for ERP applications, for mission critical applications in general. We started um, a little bit more than 10 years ago doing uh, vulnerabilities research, pen test, and, and realizing hey, there is a big problem in, in some of the largest and most critical applications uh, for some of the, the uh, largest corporations in the world. And that's why we, we started reporting vulnerabilities and working with, with a, a lot of organizations in order to secure uh, these uh, applications and parts of what we do is really identifying very, very critical vulnerabilities that we work with the vendors to, to close. Um, and that's part of this, uh, the topics that I'm going to be covering today, right? The, uh, not only the, the critical vulnerabilities uh, and why these are, are critical, but also um, how these vulnerabilities are being leveraged by threat actors uh, today. Uh, and, and that's, uh, that's really the the, the core of the session today. I would like to start by introducing to you what SAP, but more generally what an ERP is, um, because I'm going to go interchangeable uh, talking about SAP, ERP, CRM applications, SCM, uh, all those acronyms that uh, business people typically knows very well, but for us, uh, um, let's say IT security practitioners and, and really people that is used to working and, and speaking about vulnerability, CVE, CVSS, uh, exploits, uh, um, low level stuff. It's typically not, not super common. Uh, well, most of the things that you do today, uh, you go and, and shop, you, you go and get a beer, you get food, you get, um, let's say medicine, you go to a doctor, you, uh, you take holidays, pretty much everything you do involves activities that are going through ERP applications. ERP applications are, are those applications that are running some of the most critical business processes, uh, procurement, HR, um, vendors, customers, uh, purchase orders, um, a lot of those, let's say, business related concepts um, in the end are business processes that are continuously running uh, in, in every organization. Um, every company has one. Um, there, there's no question about it. Maybe the, the, the really, really small ones uh, will have still some um, uh, spreadsheets or, or some uh, more simpler ways of, of managing those processes. But uh, once you hit certain scale, um, and that we're not talking about just uh, thousands, several thousands. Yeah, you, once you go through um, 50, 100 users in a company, you start in automating all of those processes. Um, financial processes, customers, um, procurement uh, processes, uh, sales. Uh, well, we can get into details of all of those, but um, these are very, very critical applications. Um, just a, a quote from a CISO of a Fortune 500 organization. If SCP goes down, it will cost my organization 22 millions per minute. Think about 
the cost of a, a simple downtime. And if we translate that to technical terms, like someone messing around with a, with a denial of service on one of these applications, which are typically very complex, built on top of proprietary protocols and, and many interfaces. So uh, the denial of service is something that could have a significant impact here. And, and, and we are talking about financial impact, right? Um, well, uh, the data itself is very critical. There are m many different angles that makes these applications unique and attackers know that. And I'm gonna uh, show you how they are leveraging this. Um, I'm just giving you some more addition, additional substance in terms of why these are critical. Well, um, ERP applications are important because of processes or, or business critical applications are, are critical, of course, as the, as the name says, but what is the attack surface here? Uh, well, 92% of global 2000 corporations, that, that's basically the 2000 biggest corporations in the world use SAP or Oracle to process their the most critical information. 77% uh, of the world's revenue touches uh, one of these systems. Um, and one in five enterprise applications are is SaaS based. So there's a significant also push towards going to, to the cloud, not only cloud, but SaaS applications. Um, and here we can see different uh, areas of concern uh, or, or responsibilities in terms of business critical applications. Um, we are talking about a gap, and that's why we started as a, as a company. We're talking about a, a significant gap in terms of the, the security of these applications because uh, InfoSec doesn't know about them in terms of uh, the technology that is uh, running. It's a black box. IT operations doesn't know about security for these applications. Compliance is really looking for a, a fraction of these. So all of these bills uh, eventually uh, leaving a, a significant security gap. Not only that, but uh, over time, uh, there are a lot of milestones and motions and, and initiatives in organizations that are further exposing these applications. Uh, historically, we could think about these ERP solutions being in an isolated data center, completely restricted to some users. Well, <clears throat> that's changing significantly. Now it's uh, most of these are some, some in some way, shape or form in the cloud, uh, transforming uh, through digital transformation processes, uh, evolving the technology, um, being target of cyber attackers. Uh, and we are talking about not only uh, script kiddies, cyber criminals, um, also state sponsored as well. Um, all of these are building their toolkits to be able to compromise these applications. Uh, but all in all, it's, these applications are constantly changing as business are, right? Uh, organizations are adapting continuously to the ever-changing landscape. I mean, think about COVID, right? Uh, everyone had to rush, move, uh, uh, operate from uh, work from home environments, uh, opening up, changing the processes, uh, changing the dynamics, uh, customers, vendors, a lot of things change. And this maps into those applications and that introduces additional risk as well. But from a threat landscape perspective, how does it look like? Uh, well, it's also another evolving um, uh, trend, right? Uh, since we started, we th started in 2009, um, and we have been taking a look at the the different milestones. Uh, what are the threat actors that have been uh, focusing, and and what is publicly available? Um, and you see, this is really getting a lot of momentum uh, from from a milestones perspective. Um, whenever you see a the, the icon DHS US uh, CERT alert, that's basically the CISA organization releasing an alert about either vulnerability or threat actors actively targeting these applications. Um, and this also continues to evolve in terms of the vulnerabilities that are affecting these applications. The technology is so complex that there are always vulnerabilities, some, uh, sometimes very critical, that companies need to address and, and respond to. Um, this year, 2021, uh, we have seen exploits available for different components of uh, the, um, the SAP applications, specifically Solman as well. Um, we have seen 
CISA releasing an alert as well earlier this year because of ongoing threat activity. Um, and this was partly released together by Onapsis and SAP in combination because it was research that we performed together in order to understand what are threat actors doing and, and that led to being highlighted by the uh, DHS. But uh, I just wanted to cover also uh, briefly who is behind all of these. Um, and this is the Onapsis Research Labs. This is a, a team of researchers uh, globally distributed uh, focusing on securing business applications. They do research, they analyze components, they analyze implementations. They, of course, they do pen tests as well, but they, they implement a lot of research. Um, and that basically um, results in vulnerabilities and threats that are discovered uh, and are uh, integrated into our technology as well. But really, a lot of uh, the vulnerabilities that are fixed by SAP and Oracle and other vendors in these business applications are coming from the Onapsis Research Labs, uh, a leading organization in this area. So I'm going to talk about um, the, the core of this uh, presentation and, and I think uh, an executive summary would really provide uh, visibility to what's coming. Um, so basically, um, this is part of what we released together with SAP, um, and we wanted to be able to provide organizations, uh, <coughs> IT security practitioners, and companies running ERP applications, uh, information about how are threat actors uh, targeting uh, and, and focusing on ERP applications, but specifically SAP. Um, we wanted to be able to provide data points that highlight what are their TTPs? Um, what are the exploits being used? How are they connecting to these systems? What are they going after? Um, and, and all of these we were able to capture uh, through uh, the, the research that we did together with SAP and, and really identifying exactly what threat actors are doing today. What this is not about, and that's important also to, to mention, um, this is not about zero days, uh, even though we typically, uh, the, the Onapsis Research Labs present zero days at security conferences, zero days in, in, the, in the sense of vulnerabilities that were recently patched, right? We're not going to be disclosing vulnerabilities that are unpatched. Uh, we, we go by responsible disclosure with uh, working with the, with the vendors, but um, they typically uh, present about vulnerabilities that were patched by the vendor uh, and that are typically very critical. Uh, in this case, we're talking about critical vulnerabilities, but um, some of these are uh, somehow aged, but still being leveraged by threat actors uh, and still effective uh, in, in targeting SAP applications. Not talking about a vulnerability in, in any cloud infrastructure, <coughs> like SAP's cloud infrastructure, uh, not uh, specific evidence about um, threat actors targeting a specific organization. Uh, I'm going to get into details of uh, how we capture that data. So in terms of the, the agenda, uh, this is a little bit of the, the structure. Um, I started with the introduction. I'm going to get into the context, then straight into the actual fact, uh, the facts and the hard numbers. And then we're going to see some, some demos as well. Uh, why did we uh, generate this, this content and this threat intelligence and, and this um, information that we are sharing with uh, organizations? Well, we have been uh, taking part of some of the largest incident response uh, projects that organizations have been going through. Um, typically, when there is an ERP application involved, our team is boots on the ground, working with that uh, company, helping some of the leading IR firms as well, uh, working side by side. Um, but that information, as you can imagine, is strictly confidential, right? We are talking about some of the most confidential information that, that we manage. Um, but we know that these type of attacks are happening. Um, and we know that threat actors are targeting these applications. So how can we really communicate this type of um, information? How can we help organizations understand uh, if those threat actors are sophisticated, who is behind these, these attacks, what are their intentions, 
what are the TTPs, but more importantly, how can we stop them, right? How can we build capabilities to stop uh, threat actors from compromising our uh, SAP applications in the first place? And every time we have been uh, participating of these um, incident responses and, and working with SAP organizations, there has been, uh, in the majority of the cases, one out of these three uh, business outcomes. Um, threat actors are going to, uh, are targeting SAP applications to perform financial fraud. Um, or they are targeting SAP applications to exfiltrate SAP information. Uh, think about uh, formulas, like uh, <clears throat> think about the some of the most sensitive IP in uh, in companies are is typically stored also in SAP applications, uh, <clears throat> or disruption of business processes uh, that are supported by SAP. Um, in this case, if an SAP system is down, uh, well, guess what? It's also uh, down every single business process that is being supported by that, that application. Um, so that was clear in terms of the what they were going after. Um, but really, what we want to sh shed some light on is on the on the technical side. What's happening there? What's in between? So let's get into the numbers. Um, I like to to show numbers in uh, because I think. Uh, in every case, numbers really show, tell, tell a story, right? Uh, they help understanding and visualize the, what's happening out there. Um, so basically, we build a threat intelligence network able to capture uh, activity from threat actors targeting SAP applications. Um, what we were able to capture is um, evidence of attacks exploitation and activity of threat actors in uh, SAP environments, uh, ERP environments of different uh, technology, different type of uh, applications, different modules, um, but all in all over 400 confirmed exploitations uh, in a period of, uh, I think it was uh, approximately six months. Mm, out of those 400 plus, over 100 were actually connecting to the system. So we're talking about hands-on attackers uh, connecting to the system, accessing the information, accessing the data, modifying the systems, interacting with the with the business data, uh, and, and uh, really working towards that negative business outcome. We track eight main threat vectors, and by threat vectors we mean uh, the initial compromise uh, that is going through either a CVE or a CWE affecting that SAP application. And last but not least, uh, really the source country. Um, it's uh, we saw that coming from eighteen different countries. Now, uh, that's really no indication of uh, any type of attribution. It's just another data point. Um, we saw uh, campaigns that were coming from five, more than five different countries, from a number of different IP addresses, uh, completely different from the exploitation to compromise to post-exploitation. So it's really a subjective measurement, but it's another data point that is uh, interesting to, to provide as well, because it, it talks about the variability of the different sources. And I think where it gets really interesting is uh, when we talk about the, the time windows. These two data points are coming from uh, the data set that we captured of threat actors targeting SAP applications. Now, um, there, of course, we captured a lot of data, right? You can imagine that we started analyzing uh, a, a very uh, large volume of, volumes of data, but what we extracted here are the worst cases. Um, in, the, in the worst case, <clears throat> from patch re being released to exploitation, it was as bad as 72 hours. Um, that means that from the moment that SAP released the patch to a critical vulnerability to the moment that that critical vulnerability started being exploited was less than 72 hours. <clears throat> now, if you are an IT security practitioner, um, you might uh, tell me, hey, but that's that's really nothing new, right? That's uh, common. It's uh, no, uh, common operations for any vulnerability. And I, I would tell you, yes, it is. Um, but it is for 
pretty much everything else but SAP or ERP applications. ERP applications have been really in this uh, bubble where the time windows have been really significantly long. I'm, and we're not talking about hours, we're talking about years. <clears throat> Sorry, organizations have been uh, deploying patches uh, with years of delays um, in some cases. So thinking about that, pu putting that in perspective, it really makes you understand, okay, this is the, these applications, these uh, business critical applications are becoming more and more similar to what uh, another asset in the IT security, in, in the IT landscape would look like. Uh, so it's becoming more and more similar to a Windows, a Citrix server, or any other application. <clears throat> also, uh, another data point, it was as bad as three hours from the system, a new IP being exposed to an untrusted network all the way till that IP became compromised. Um, <clears throat> of course, I think uh, um, the, the mean was approximately six days and the maximum was three weeks, I think. Uh, so we had a lot of data points there um, but it was as bad as three hours. Um, so this is important to understand uh, how do we protect this, right? Um, and, and we need to be protecting this as hard as we protect uh, everything else in our company because threat actors are not, now they are not treating this differently than, than any other asset. Now, I would like to go through three different examples. Um, I mentioned we identified eight uh, different threat vectors as a initial compromise. Well, I'm going to go through the three that I think are more rep most representative of what threat actors are doing. The first one is CB226287. This one I is a CBSS10 <clears throat> that was patched by SAP during 2020. And soon after the patch was released, we started seeing active exploitation of this vulnerability. Um, and that keeps going uh, and it's really being used to compromise SAP applications. Um, it is a different variety affected Java systems. So anything on top of NetWear Java, anything on top of SAP Enterprise Portal is affected. <clears throat> and you have there some numbers in terms of the source of exploitation um, and, and the distribution in time um, a lot of uh, activity in terms of exploitation, network activity, uh, and different data points. But all in all, this was a vulnerability that was patched by ECP and very, very soon after started being exploited by threat actors and, and being used to compromise systems because this vulnerability allows for an automatic creation of uh, a user on the application level, an admin user. The second one is, uh, I think, even more interesting uh, because of the timeline. Um, this is a vulnerability that was patched by SAP in 2020. I didn't mention uh, on the previous thread, on the thread number one, that vulnerability was reported by Onassis Research Labs to SAP. This one was reported by the Onassis Research Labs as well. Um, another CVSS10, <coughs> SAP released the patch. Um, and we haven't seen an exploit publicly available until earlier this year. I think it was January or February this year. The interesting part is that uh, when we started looking at the historical data, well, guess what? There's been active exploitation of the vulnerability uh, during October and November 2020. So that means that someone or, or different uh, threat actors had the knowledge of how to exploit this vulnerability before the, there was even a publicly available exploit. Um, and that tells you a lot about the, the capabilities that these threat actors are building on top of, right? Um, but definitely a, an interesting um, angle. These correlated very well with some of the incident responses that, that we have been uh, working with some organizations in terms of the, the, the activities, the, the exploits being used, and how uh, organizations uh, eventually became uh, affected by this. The third threat uh, is really nothing super advanced, nothing uh, fancy or, or complex. We are talking about the good old uh, <coughs> default 
and, and critical users uh, with default passwords and, and critical authorizations. Um, threat actors know about these, uh, these users and they actively try to use them to log into SAP applications. So there is also automation around uh, being able to connect to the systems uh, using default passwords and, and, and critical users, even if they don't have the, the default passwords. Um, so it's not just about CVEs. <clears throat> what, what this also summarizes is really threat actors are using everything and anything they have in order to compromise SAP applications and be able to ultimately uh, access the business data. So when we put all of that together um, <clears throat> into what, what is the life cycle of attacks? How does it look like? Well, um, it looks uh, interesting from a, from a FACES perspective. It's, uh, it starts with a continuous automated scanning. So threat actors are building uh, and, and building on top of their existing infrastructures to perform automated scanning, also searching for SAP specific vulnerabilities. Um, uh, this is to, re to do reconnaissance and identify what are the assets and what are the vulnerabilities that, that can be leveraged to compromise those systems. Um, then we are also looking at automated exploitation. Um, in, there is also manual exploitation as well, but we are looking at um, capabilities that are being automated to be able to compromise systems and connect to them. And finally, hands-on keyboard manual login uh, after the exploitation, connecting to a system, accessing data, navigating through different sections, um, downloading data, um, and, and, and moving laterally as well. Uh, as I mentioned, all of these uh, eventually becomes part of one of these three uh, negative business outcomes. So what, what I'm going to be focusing now, and I want to share as, as part of this uh, session, is really uh, the this phase, the hands-on keyboard login phase. And for that, I'm going to switch over to, to a demo. I'm going to try to do that as quick as possible. All right, so this is the demo um, that we put together. What is this demo about? Well, this demo is about uh, a com compiling of all the different um, sessions that we were able to capture of threat actors targeting SAP applications. And what do I mean by sessions? Well, we instrumented our threat intelligence network in order to be able to actually see what these threat actors are doing. So for example, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna start with one session that came uh, from Russia, for example. This is going through the uh, application you can see they are the error, right? That's a human actually copying and pasting, logging into a system, going through different sessions. <clears throat> this is an SAP system, by the way, um, or at least one of the modules or the components of this, uh, going through the versions. Um, I, I'm looking for a very, very specific versions of, of one of those components. <clears throat> this one coming from the US, apparently, but when we look at the the locale, well, it's not English, right? It's, it's someone, most likely going from an US IP, but uh, using a different language. Now, going to different sections, configurations, how the system is set up, SSL, uh, security relevant settings, uh, user management settings, um, authorizations, different sections in terms of uh, the, how the system is configured, set up and, and maintained. This one coming from Sweden, um, interesting, uh, you know, interestingly enough, combining more than one vulnerability, CB2026287 with CB2018-2380 uh, to be able to achieve OS level access as well. Um, and this other one coming from Yemen, um, logging into the SAP Enterprise Portal, um, uh, navigating through different uh, sections like HR business data um, and, and different sections that uh, we also extracted from the from the video. This other one uh, was coming from multiple IP addresses, uh, going through the, pretty much every section of, uh, of the business data, sales documents, financial data, HR related data, 
uh, downloading employee uh, information. Um, so this was actually the screen of the attacker, right? That's what you are looking at uh, right now. Um, this other one uh, coming from China uh, also uh, is, you can see the locale there, um, logging into the system and trying to uh, shut down the system as well. Um, this is what we are looking at uh, in terms of username and password, being able to log into a system, uh, perform a, a system shutdown um, and, and perform different type of activities. This, this one was all over as well from a technical perspective. Um, so going to go back to the, to the demo, to the slides, and summarize what we saw. So what we saw is really all about this post exploitation phase, right? Users connecting to the system and uh, we compiled actually um, a lot of different, like hours of, of uh, sessions and, and actions into um, an impactful uh, two or three minutes video. So, so we make it fit as part of this presentation, um, but it's really, uh, highlighting the different type of threat actors that are connecting and, and exploiting systems, accessing data and, and, and navigating through the different applications. These threat actors understand the technology, understand the, the business processes and know what are the weaknesses that can be abused and exploited in these systems. So this is the, the video that we saw. Um, just to provide some uh, takeaways and, and implications. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to focus on four of these. Uh, there are a lot of different insights that we can extract from actually watching threat actors compromising these applications. Uh, there are a lot of insights that we can extract from understanding what they are after, how they are uh, attacking the system, what are the, the TTPs, and I'm going to get into details uh, about that in a, in a minute. Uh, but really, these threat actors are actively targeting unsecured uh, SAP applications. Threat actors know and understand how to do that. I, uh, that was uh, another misconception that we used to uh, hear. Yes, but uh, this is uh, threat actors don't don't know about SAP. They don't know how to connect. They don't know uh, what are the weaknesses. They they don't understand these applications. Well, they they do, right? Uh, they have they do to a point that they have automated a lot of these phases for reconnaissance for a exploitation and they manually go on and connect to those systems and extract data um, this correlates very well with the similar um, ttps and, and techniques that are being used by threat actors in systems that are also internal right and systems that are in in, in an internal network the time windows that we saw in terms of um, time to exploit um, fr from exposure to exploitation and from uh, patch to active exploitation um, is really shrinking. Uh, we are talking about less than 72 hours for, for patch to exploit and less than two hours, less than three hours, sorry, uh, for, from exposure to compromise. Um, so that gives little room to, to, for defenders to, to react to that. Um, I, I, for me, what's important here is that we need to treat these applications uh, the same way uh, we treat every other application, the same way we, we treat Windows systems, Windows servers, Linux servers, our databases, all our IT landscape, uh, because threat actors are uh, attacking these applications the same way, right? With the same pace and and uh, and, and similar techniques. Um, it's not just about the CVEs; it's also about C uh, configurations, misconfigurations, um, vulnerabilities. So in, in in reality, it's everything and anything that can be used to address um, target an SAP application is going to be used, um, and and this. Toolkits are being built on top of uh, the the known vulnerabilities, but also the vulnerabilities that are not yet publicly available, for which there are not publicly available exploits yet, are still also being used. 
Um, so we can talk about a, a vulnerability that is 10 years old as well as a vulnerability that is uh, a few days old. And finally, because of the nature of these systems, because of the nature of these applications, um, we are not just talking about a cyber risk. It's not just a, a, a potentially a, a vulnerability uh, or, or a risk uh, related to a, a breach, an incident, a data incident. We are talking about significant compliance risks here. Um, because of the data that is being processed by these applications, well, most of these applications are subject to GDPR, SOX, HIPAA, NERC, PCI, you name it, right? Depending on the uh, location, depending on the type of data, depending on the industry, uh, you might be subject to diff a number of different uh, regulations that would force you to apply the right controls there. Um, so I think it's important to understand that we're not just talking about a vulnerability and a cyber risk. Um, in the report that we released um, we, together with SAP, uh, we provided all the data points in terms of the timelines and the, the, the observed TTPs and the exploits and vulnerabilities. So please go ahead and, and download the report. Um, it's going to be linked to this presentation as well. Um, and really, this is what was highlighted by the uh, DHS. Um, everything is really actionable in terms of time frames, CVs, and, and all the information that you need to, to react. I want to close out uh, with some, some of the things that I have on the appendix, which is these are the vulnerabilities to, to watch for, right? These are the vulnerabilities that we saw being exploited and automatically being used uh, in, a, in a number of different scenarios. Um, we're talking about CWE and C CVEs. Um, so this is also on the report. Take a look at that. Um, you have sub-security notes related to it. Um, we also saw different uh, TTPs and, and different indicators, IOCs, that can be used to identify who is actually exploiting these vulnerabilities. It, this is a summary. It's on the report as well. Um, so you can go if you have proper logging and you have proper information, you can go and analyze your systems as well. Uh, and finally, we also included the, uh, the IP addresses that are um, from which we saw uh, the parts of these activities, at least the most active ones going and, and exploiting and connecting to the systems. So with that, um, I'm going to close this part of the session and open for, for any questions. Thank you very much. That was a uh, fantastic talk, uh, JP. Thank you so much. And uh, we have some questions coming in uh, on Discord and through a couple other channels to me as well. And uh, the first question comes uh, comes from Nick, and his question is, uh, I may have missed it, but is there, is there an easy way uh, to get started with SAP Volan Research as an independent researcher or on a small scale? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question again? I, I missed the first part. Uh, sure, and I'll also drop it into our little chat here so you can see that as well. Uh, but the, the, basically the question was, uh, how can an individ, a, you know, independent researcher or somebody who is just getting started uh, at a small scale uh, get started with SAP or similar types of uh, enterprise uh, software? Yeah, then how can they uh, get involved with that space? Because it's obviously, you can't just download a copy and install it on a VM somewhere. Or yeah. can you? <laughs> well, that, that's a great question. Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, like, we can <laughs> we can talk for an hour on that. Uh, no, but uh, um, jokes aside, um, there are many different ways you can access uh, that technology. SAP has been improving in terms of the openness to the research community is setting up also bug bounty programs uh, that uh, researchers can, can leverage as well, especially for the cloud-based applications. For the on-prem technology, the, 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 let's say, traditional SAP technology, NetWeaver, Java, uh, business objects, or all that uh, more traditional one, uh, there are ways to actually download, um, uh, let's say, software that you can install and, and start developing. If you are a developer and want to learn 
how to develop on top of SAP, that's the way you start. And, and you have many resources to learn. Um, there's SAP Cloud, Plat uh, SAP Cloud Platform, SAP Cloud Appliance Library. There are concepts called mini SAPs. I, it might have changed uh, in the during time. This might be called differently, but SAP provides uh, people that doesn't necessarily work in a large enterprise and have access to an SAP system, uh, mechanisms to actually access that technology and, and start getting uh, involved in the concepts and understanding how to develop, what, what are the, the different components and, and really learn about the, the topic, right? Then you can go into different directions uh, from that. Awesome, thank you. That, that, was, that was very thorough. Um, Hey, with another question coming in is, uh, what would you like to see uh, SAP change about their, you know, the current way they do uh, vulnerability remediation and how they interact with the security community? Hmm. Um, another great question. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Onapsis was founded in 2009, uh, and even before that, the the founders uh, uh, we were really. Uh, working closely with SAP on, on vulnerabilities research, reporting, we have reported hundreds of vulnerabilities and, and, and that's really improved um, since like uh, 2005, 2006, 2007, all the way to uh, current, uh, the, the current process. It's been an evolution from SAP. Um, it, it's taking the, the, the input that the research community provides <clears throat> more and more seriously and really uh, uh, making the products uh, more um, more secure every one version after the other. So we we have seen that evolution and and really in that sense I have nothing but good words. I mean it's it's been a, a, a learning phase for for everyone, right? It's it's not just sure. SAP. All the vendors uh, in, have been improving over the years the way they they respond. So. Uh, we have a very good communication with SAP and, and really very uh, clear um, touch points on, on the reports that we make. Uh, we have the ability to comment on the risk and, and really uh, provide our perspective back and forth. Um, so I think something that is super interesting that SAP changed uh, um, over the past, I would say, probably two years, two to three years, is that they, they opened up to the research community more. Uh, really embracing the concept of bug bounty programs. Uh, so that's really, um, th th that's a very good thing, right? Because uh, it's, it's going Absolutely. in line with, uh, with many other vendors as well. Fantastic, thank you. Um, a question that came up for me when I was watching uh, your talk myself was, uh, you had some great data um, and then near the beginning of your talk, talking about sort of attacks you were seeing. And one of the questions that came to mind, and I have no idea like if this is even a, like a possible thing, but were you able to determine how many like unique groups you know, were, were, attacker, were attacking? Did they like, were you identifying signatures from particular, uh, uh, you know, attack groups, kind of like you see, uh, uh, you know, some of the larger uh, vulnerability uh, research groups announcing, you know, APT, whatever numbers, popular one have have you were you able to identify like unique groups who are attacking in that data yeah lo love uh, the questions tonight uh super interesting so uh, as you know like attribution and really being able to group those uh, attackers into single groups is the hardest part sure. um it's it's still a work in progress we are working with different organizations to understand uh, how to uh, point those together. We have been doing some preliminary um, analysis, but really our strength as a company is not so much on the on, on that side, it's more on the sure. really vulnerability research and, and the, the ACP technology itself. We are working with, with partners to try to uh, nail that. As, as you know, it's it's an ongoing process, right? This is, this is the result of a six months uh, a project that is still uh, after that uh, continue right and, and it's evolving um, at some point we expect to have something like really grouping of different uh, APTs and, and, and groups that are accessing that with different levels of sophistications but uh, but it's still a work in progress very cool thank you 
Um, and uh, another question from, from Discord uh, is, uh, someone is asking, uh, how reliable have you found uh, the output of Solomon uh, in terms of identifying current patch levels and which you know, SAP notes have been applied and whatnot? Um, and have you seen question? Have you seen occasions where this data has been you know, meaningfully wrong? And if so, how did that arise? Yeah, unfortunately, yes, we have found cases, and we have reported to SAP cases where where solution manager was uh, not identifying properly, especially with critical vulnerabilities. Um, so um, I know SAP is continuously improving that, um, but eventually, um, what? Without focusing on the how, what companies need to be able is to identify at every uh, given point in time really the the level of risk that those applications have, right? Uh, by by misconfigurations, missing patches, whatever integrations. There are many different areas of risk. Solution Manager will provide some perspective on that, uh, but uh, but yeah, in, in order to get really a full picture. Uh, you need a, a proper solution. Uh, that's my my perception on that. Um, and we have found some cases where, where really someone wasn't providing the right visibility. And 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 in in some cases even like it's a false sense of, of security because you think that you have uh, that you are not vulnerable to something that you may be. Um, and uh, so that's why it's important to really keep up with uh, with what SAP is updating and, and providing as well. So, do you have some uh, recommendations about how to uh, more reliably for uh, you know, for those of us on the on the defense side? How can we more reliably determine what you know basically what's the state of the system uh, if if Solomon is not uh, is not reliable? Yeah, well, it really depends on what you want to find out. Is on one hand, uh, you may have uh, you may want to see if uh, that system is vulnerable to X, Y, Z, like CB, CWEs are a risk. Uh, for for that, it's really um, like that's at the core of what we do. So um, I would really encourage you to to talk to us, and and we can we have different ways of helping. Um, the other is really understanding if someone actively exploited the vulnerability in your system. For that. It's also at the core of what we do, but we do provide uh, IOCs uh, in uh, in GitHub and and really with every critical campaign, with every critical vulnerability that we re identify and report to SAP, we come out with uh, also uh, open source uh, IOCs for identifying if someone was compromised. Very cool. That's really nice. Um, we have time for one or two more questions, depending on how long they take. Um, so the next one that came across was uh, you mentioned that you know that people are you know attacking in as early as th you know anywhere from three to seventy two hours that are going after vulnerabilities that have been patched uh, post patch release. Um, obviously, most organizations are not that agile to address vulnerabilities in any systems that quickly. Uh, do you have any recommendations on either ways they could speed that up or alternative uh, mechanisms they could use to protect themselves till they can get the patches deployed, especially given how, how critical to an, an organization SAP can be? Definitely, yeah. Um, so it's um, SAP, especially business applications, uh, the complexity and the criticality of these applications makes it, uh, in some cases, really, really complex to react on time. Um, so uh, for me, it's not so much about the, the technology that you have, it's really about is this a priority to, to the organization, right? Do you have the right process? Do you have the right visibility? Because then you can start implementing a, a on one hand, a patching process that uh, incorporates scenarios where you need to react fast um, and you have the process for that. And, and on the other hand, it's really the visibility, right? Is how do you know exactly what are the risks on your systems at any given point in time? So um, uh, technology aside, you can solve that in, uh, through different ways, but uh, really it's all mm -hmm. about, is this a priority for the company? The, the most important thing is really making it a priority and, and making sure that the, the organization has the right processes to react. Is, is, uh, there is a new uh, zero day coming through, there is a new patch, critical patch, CVSS 10, okay, uh, 
how, how do we deploy this uh, with, the, with the right time? Because it's not for every single patch, right? It's only for those ones that are really critical that are going to be exploited uh, very soon in that uh, 72 hours uh, uh, windows. Fantastic. Great. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, we're going to finish things up now. Uh, that was a great final question. Uh, JP, thank you so much for your time and for your presentation. The great questions, great answers, and uh, it seems like the audience really thoroughly enjoyed themselves. And I really appreciate you uh, staying up late on, uh, on a weekend to uh, help uh, do the Q&A portion. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it um, and enjoyed the rest of the conference. Thank you.